I happen to be familiar with uh, what we used to call Indian country and also with residential schools. I actually co-authored a book with the former students of one of the largest residential schools in the country a few years ago. Um, and so I also uh, wrote a story about 10 years ago, maybe longer, about this strange kind of satanic ritual abuse phenomenon, you know, this myth going around. Uh, and I have to credit Jorge Barrera as well from the Aboriginal People's Tele Television Network, who did a great job debunking all of this. This crazed, uh, deranged, United Church, defrocked United Church priest was going around to Indigenous communities, reserved communities across the country, you know, with little bags of bones and saying, you know, there's this secret archipelago of mass graves at residential schools across the country, and they were all murdered and put in there. And, you know, the Indigenous leadership is in on the conspiracy, and so is the church, and so are several prime ministers, just crazy stuff. And, you know, it was debunked, and he was chased out of every Indian community in Canada, Indigenous community in Canada. And then, but it was always kind of percolated, right? And then, pow, the New York Times story on the 27th of May last year was almost like, okay, UFOs have landed. I mean, it was like a meteor hit the earth, right? But paradoxically, it wasn't the craziest of the stories that developed through the summertime. Uh, you know, it became a kind of a stock uh, sentence that you would see in all of these stories by September. You know, the, the, the graves of 1,300 uh, Indigenous children had been discovered at residential schools across the country. Never happened. Never happened. I mean, never happened. Never happened. Um, in the case of Kamloops, the it, Chief Casimir, Rose Casimir, never even claimed to have found a mass grave. The, the term mass grave was never used. And uh, by the Tuesday, I guess, it was a Thursday, Friday when the story broke, I guess, something like that. Um, by the Tuesday, she was saying, I never said mass grave. We didn't find a mass grave. What, what are you talking about? Um, I think there's a lot. I haven't criticized Chief Casimir. A lot of people, I think, particularly within the Kemlops community, have been very critical of the way she described what are essentially anomalies in um, in uh, geophysical uh, surveys of an old apple orchard, you know, uh, anomalies picked up in ground penetrating radar that subsequent uh, uh, reporting, site inspection reporting have suggested are not, not likely to be graves at all. But what was, what that does that mean? Anom anomalies were picked up and why did they think that that connected to graves? Well, around the time of this crazy United Church priest, this defrocked guy. Um, there were stories that started to come out of Kamloops about, you know, like there's all of these stories that are all very, very similar, often involve, you know, babies being thrown into incinerators. And there's sort of myth motifs, if you know anything about urban legends. And, and um, in Kamloops, there were stories about people being buried in an orchard and kids being woken up in the middle of the night at the residential school and made to go out uh, and dig graves uh, and mm -hmm. bury children. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know, I'm not saying, I actually, I don't want to sound dismissive because, you know, the mortality rates at those schools was through the roof. Uh, they were terrible places. They were Petri dishes for infectious diseases like tuberculosis and what have you. I'm just constant. In fact, the piece I wrote wasn't even about residential schools. It was about the media. Yeah. It was about journalism. And um, the Kamloops story, kind of, like I say, it was kind of like the meteor hitting the earth because it was almost like, oh my God, those stories are true. And I think journalism is largely responsible for this because in the immediate aftermath, you had, for instance, Perry Bellegarde uh, interviewed on a national new television news program saying, well, and the interviewer, and I, he's a nice person and I don't mean to dismiss him. He was just going on what everybody else was reporting you know, how many mass graves, how many thousands of children do you think might be buried in these mass graves? And uh, Perry was kind of saying, well, you know, we should kind of hold on a sec. You know, we should, we need to do some research here. 
But I, you know, it actually, that wasn't actually the most outrageous coverage of the summer. Uh, I would invite you to imagine being Chief Joe Pierre, uh, a Khan chief up at uh, St. Eugene's, uh, St. Eugene's uh, Golf Resort and Casino, actually, come early, come often. St. Eugene's used to be, there used to be a residential school there. Okay. Lovely old building. They kept the building, repurposed it for their resort. Um, and the year before, when they were doing some grounds work, some human remains were disinterred or disturbed uh, at the edge of a cemetery, a known cemetery. Uh, and so the people up there are, you know, Tunaka people tend to be very serious about the encounter with human remains. And they're mostly Catholics up there too. And so they took it very seriously. And they got around to doing some GPR work in a cemetery. that was actually a white cemetery for, for white people. Settler Cemetery. There was a residential school that was built nearby. And then there was a hospital. And they're mostly Catholics up there, indigenous and non-indigenous. So that was their cemetery. And, and, and imagine being Chief Joe Pierre waking up one morning and reading in CBC, The Guardian, and Al Jazeera, and everywhere else, that he had discovered the remains of 280 children in a, at a former residential school site. It's like, what the? Yeah. You know, and I mean, th th that that's pretty crazy. And and the only and the first thing he said about it was, there is no residential school grave here. We didn't make any such discovery. We never said anything like it. And then Cowessus was the big one, 751 graves, founded a residential school. And this is the thing, when you had uh, uh, Justin Trudeau, the prime minister, taking a knee, as he likes to, he likes to take a knee. And he took a knee at uh, with a teddy bear, holding a teddy bear, at the um, at the Marieville Residential School in uh, at Cowessus, where the chief Cadmus Delorme, great guy, had said, um, "This is uh, not an Indian residential school graveyard. This is a Catholic cemetery, and we don't know if anybody from the, the residential school is buried there." The cent the National Center for Truth and Reconciliation counts only nine students of the Marieville residential school over its 90 year history that are known to have died after being enrolled at the school. So whether they're actually there buried in that cemetery, nobody knows. Mm -hmm. And again, I want to credit Jorge Barrera, who's now with the indigenous unit at CBC, the only reporter who really did any on the ground work there, who, you know, he talked to all these old people and saying, why don't they talk to us? Like here we, we live here. You know, and and uh, Lloyd Larat and Elder saying, well, you know, the media came along and Trudeau and and everybody wanted this story about uh, you know unmarked graves and and the story kind of took on a life of its own. These graves are unmarked because, uh, like most or many indigenous cemeteries and rural cemeteries, uh, the crosses are wooden. There's grass fires. The crosses burn. And so you could say, yeah, that's an unmarked grave. And I guess you could say, yeah, somebody's buried in an unmarked grave. Nobody was sort of, there's no evidence at all that any of these, among the 1300 alleged, you know, burials of Indian children, it's not clear how many of them were burials of Indian children. It's not clear how many of them, if any, were actually, uh, you know, instances of children being put in, a, in the ground and, buried and left without any kind of grave marker. It was, um, it was pretty crazy. And I, I, I just, my, my, my objective was to say, what the hell? Uh, journal, you know, this is, it was about journalism. I've never, in fact, I've, I've concurred and argued for the proposition that residential schools were cultural genocide. Uh, as I say, you know, I've co-authored a book with the survivors of a residential school wasn't even about residential schools, but um, it was about journalism. And the fallout was pretty magnificent. It was pretty spectacular. 